As red imported fire ants spread into more populated areas of the state, more people are likely to be stung. Encounters with fire ants can be expected not only outdoors, but indoors as well. Foraging ants have invaded homes as well as buildings such as offices, hospitals, and nursing homes. In these situations, fire ant control is potentially more difficult because of concerns related to both the ants and the indoor use of chemical insecticides. Because fire ants cannot be eradicated over wide areas, the goal should be to manage the ants with a combination of chemical and non-chemical control tactics. You want to eliminate fire ants in the areas where they pose the most immediate hazard to people and animals. Fire ants spend a great deal of time searching for food. That foraging activity can bring them inside buildings. You can reduce ant foraging around buildings by eliminating available food sources. Outdoor trash cans around schools, parks, and other buildings should be emptied frequently during the day. Avoid leaving trash in them overnight. Keep the area around trash cans clean. At home, trash cans should have lids on them. Dumpsters and grease bins found at food service facilities should be emptied routinely and the areas around them kept as clean as possible. Keep shrubs pruned away from buildings so that ants can't use them as a bridge to avoid treated areas. There are two basic approaches to chemical control of fire ants. An insecticide can be applied to individual mounds or it may be broadcast over a wide area infested with fire ant colonies. Individual mound treatments are usually more environmentally acceptable because they use less insecticide and limit the areas treated. They are also likely to have less impact on non-target insects. Regardless of the method used, the objective is to kill not only the workers, but also the queen, because she is the only ant in the colony that is capable of laying eggs. Because insecticides are toxicants, it goes without saying that fire ant chemicals should be used according to label directions. There are several different insecticide formulations for controlling fire ants that you can purchase at your local farm and garden center. There are baits, drenches, powders, and granules to choose from. The formulation that you choose will depend on how extensive the fire ant infestation is on your property. Each insecticide formulation is applied in a different way. Fire ant baits are granular formulations that contain slow-acting insecticides dissolved in soybean oil. The oil is a highly attractive food source for fire ants. Consequently, ants that are foraging for food readily pick up and carry bait particles back to their nests, where the oil is extracted from the particle and fed to the queen and immature ants. A fertilizer or seed spreader can be used to broadcast baits over areas of the landscape that are infested with fire ants. Because ants are foraging for food away from their mounds, you do not need to apply bait to every area of your yard. But it is important to uniformly apply the bait at the rate specified on the product label. The manufacturer should have provided instructions on how you can calibrate your application device. A broadcast treatment is the best control option when the infested area is large and infested with too many fire ant mounds to treat individually. Once they discover the bait, Ants will carry the bait product back to the mound and distribute the toxicant to the whole colony. Then it is just a matter of time before the ants are killed and the mound is destroyed. In addition to broadcast treatments, baits can be applied directly to each mound. Mound applications are best used when there are just a few ant mounds to control. Use a measuring spoon to sprinkle the bait around each mound according to the label directions. Baits should not be applied to the top of the mound since fire ants don't forage for food in this area. Baits should be applied when fire ants are actively foraging. That is when temperatures are above 70 degrees and below 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Some insecticides are mixed with water and applied directly to the ant mounds. Granular insecticides can be applied to the surface of the mound and then water is applied to leach the insecticide down into the mound. It takes a minimum of two gallons of water per mound to distribute the insecticide deep enough to contact all the ants in the mound, including the queen. That's a lot of water hauling unless there are just a few mounds to be treated. 
The drench method works best if you don't disturb the mound. Be sure to follow the directions carefully when preparing the drench. Just pour the drench over the surface of the mound slowly enough that it runs down into the mound. Also, be sure to pour some drench around the edge of the mound. Powders are another type of individual mound treatment. The toxic powder works its way down into the mound, exposing immatures and the queen to the insecticide. For high-risk areas where it is likely that people and pets may be attacked by fire ants, a preventative treatment may be the best choice. There are products on the market that can be applied to high traffic areas to control fire ants and keep them from moving in for up to one year. These products can be applied as a granule just like a fertilizer. They must be watered in before they become effective. They are the most expensive of the fire ant control products available, but for high risk areas they may be worth the money. To eliminate just a few fire ant mounds, any one of the fire ant formulations just described will work. However, if your property is infested with a large number of fire ant colonies, you should consider using a combination of methods. First, broadcast fire ant baits over the entire infested area. Use a seed or fertilizer spreader to obtain uniform coverage. Next, several days to a week after the broadcast treatment, treat individual problem mounds. Only treat those mounds in high traffic areas. The two-step method of fire ant control can be applied at any time, but is most effective when applied in the spring and in the fall. There are some non-chemical methods available that can be used against fire ants. They may be limited in their effectiveness, however. Water heated 90 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter and mechanical disruption have been used in many instances. Evaluations done at Texas A&M University have shown that these treatments will kill large numbers of ants. However, satellite mounds formed by surviving ants subsequently appear. Thus, these methods have a useful but temporary impact on fire ant colonies. They may be necessary to use in situations where pesticides of any type are considered unacceptable. Other non-chemical mechanical devices that disrupt colonies do not have scientifically based test data to support their effectiveness. One potential downside to using hot water is that it can damage or kill vegetation in the general vicinity. The key to reducing the threat of fire ant infestation indoors is prevention, which means removing exposed food sources that may attract these insects. In some cases, fire ants may nest indoors, inside walls or under concrete slab floors. In these instances, you will likely see soil and other debris pushed out around expansion joints near the edge of carpeting or around water or other utility pipes. In most situations, fire ants are simply entering the building from an outdoor nest. The treatment objective must be to reduce the potential for accidental stings as quickly as possible. Insecticides labeled for indoor use can be found in the North Carolina Agricultural Chemicals Manual. The pyrethroid insecticides, products containing chemicals such as permethrin, cyfluthrin, or bifenthrin, can be used in homes and public buildings to drive out foraging ants. Select products that are specifically labeled for indoor use. Be sure to carefully follow the directions that come with the pesticide you choose. Although baits work well for many ant species, they are not the best choice for controlling fire ants indoors because they are likely to draw more ants inside. For this reason, it is important to positively identify the ants that are invading your home before applying any control measures. Information about other ant species can be found in a guide to house invading ants and their control. For more information on controlling fire ants in your area, contact your local office of North Carolina Cooperative Extension.